Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Spring Loaded Football Podcast, where each and every week we talk about Spring League football. We cover the USFL, the XFL, X League, fan control football. Guys, we talk it all. I'm going to bring in my co-host for this week. This week we just got the coach with us. Uh, Wayne had to step out, so it's just uh, Colonel and Coach. So Not just any s- coach. <laughs> Pit Viper Coach. Well, well, Coach, here we are, the end of the USFL season. Uh, They finished up in Birmingham this week. They're going to be in Canton, Ohio for the playoffs. So let's talk about them games. Yeah, it's going to be some games. (laughs) Yeah, well, starting off this past week, we had the uh, Philadelphia Stars going down to the New Jersey Generals 23-26. In a pretty good game. I mean, you know, New Jersey looks like it had the time of possession and stuff, but Philly's a team, you know, they got to play these, this team next week. So it's going to yeah. be pretty interesting to see what happens. Yeah, maybe maybe they can make a comeback. I mean, they, I mean, all New Jersey had is five more plays than, you know, Philadelphia, but you got to look at the yardage. It was uh, New Jersey was getting 7.5 yards right. a play. Oh, I mean, yeah. In my book, you know, the Generals are a better team. We've actually seen them play. Yep. And I, I'm pretty sure we've seen the Stars play. I can't remember. but Yeah, a little bit. We didn't watch the whole game. But but in my book, you know, watching on TV and watching that, you know, live, the Generals are a better team overall. I mean, they yep. just got the manpower. They've got everything. For sure. I, I think they are the better team, and I do think they will go on in the playoffs to face what I hope is Birmingham in the championship game. So, Yep. That is a possibility. Yeah, and then here we are. we got Birmingham Stallions going over the Tampa Bay Bandits in a, in a close game, 21-18. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Magoo, Magoo played a lot of this game. And, uh, yeah. You know, Come out with a win. That's what we need. Uh, I, I mean, necessarily you don't have to have it, but it's it's good to end the season on a win. Yeah, it is. It was a. Uh, I, I I'm glad to see them get a win. I mean, you sure. Know, yeah. They've already got their seat, so they're playing. We go actually done pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, and the and the game was just close. It was on the edge. One of them heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you pay for the whole seat, but you only need the edge, man, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, look at the total drives, though, 13 and 12. Yeah, and 12. I mean, that's close. I mean, Birmingham has, you know, almost 400 yards total, which is fantastic, yeah. you know. So, and they were scoring touchdowns, you know. They weren't yeah. kicking field goals, you know, so, so that's, that's good. That's but it looks like what they didn't start scoring until about second quarter. Yeah. And then third quarter didn't score any, and then fourth quarter scored another touchdown to put them twenty one. Yep. So, like I said, hopefully this is some good luck heading into the playoffs where they're going to play New Orleans. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about the Breakers now. The Breakers fell to the Gamblers three to twenty. I'm only guessing the Breakers were resting a lot of people, getting ready yeah. for the playoffs. But what a way to end the season for the Gamblers, man, beating Birmingham and New Orleans in back-to-back weeks. Mm-hmm. Coming out with big wins. I mean, the defense looks like the defense really stepped it up. I mean, look at the yards per play. Sure. Two yards. Yeah, I know. I know. That's terrible. I mean, don't, a, don't get me wrong. Look at the yardage for Houston well, yeah, for the three, right. but – Right. Well, this Houston team's had a dominant defense pretty much all year, it seems like. Yeah. So. I'm just glad to see them getting into, you know, the spur of things. Hate that it's at the end of the season, though. Right. But you but, hope it carries over into next year yeah. and uh, have a little bit of momentum. Yeah. Hopefully. Maybe they'll give them a little bit more practice time, one on one time, and everything. Right. But, you know, New Orleans heading into the playoffs to, to play Birmingham. You know, like I said, are they going to be more rested than Birmingham was? You know, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. There's no telling in this. One. And here we go with the battle of the worst teams in the league. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Michigan Panthers overtake the Pittsburgh Maulers 33-21. to 
Kirby Wilson ends the season with a loss, which is how most of the seasons went for him. <laughs> so <laughs> he's used to it. He's got you against Ireland. Right. And he had a press conference after the game where he talked about he thought this season was, you know, productful or produ- you know, was very productive. And, you know, a lot of good things happened. Well, yeah. if, good, if good things happened, we didn't see it. It all looked bad to me. Might have been in the dressing room. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be shocking to me if Kirby stays in this league. You know, I don't yeah. know if they'll fire him or not, but I don't know. I don't think he stays. Yeah. It was a little harsh, but. Yeah. I mean, they picked it up. They got one win. I said it would yeah. happen. They would at least get one. Yeah, they got and one. They did. Yeah. But, <laughs> but man, just a oh, rough boy. year. Just a rough year for them. I, and I think it's all coaching. I think it starts with the coach, you know. Well, and, and that's you got to have them click. And that scandal that happened at the beginning of the year with, you know, Pizzagate or whatever. And, you know. <laughs> Followed by the chicken the, chi- the chicken salad crisis. Chicken salad. Yeah, chicken salad crisis and stuff. And I think the team just uh, lost faith in the coach. And like you said, you know, you got to click. And um, they didn't have any motivation to, you know. And they had a, they had a few good players. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the offensive player of the week, uh, the Michigan Panthers quarterback, uh, Paxton Lynch, which was a surprise. You know, hasn't done much all year, but here he is, uh, player or offensive player Cheer. of the week. Cheers to him. You know, again, they're playing Pittsburgh, so it's not that hard to put look up some good. numbers. Yeah, <laughs> you know? to look good. He probably slid a piece of pizza over to the team. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And here we go, the defensive player of the week. We had Donald Payne, linebacker oh. from the Gamblers. He's been defensive player of the week, it seems like, many weeks. And mm-hmm. um, just shows Every you Every time that, you look at it, it's him almost. Yeah, I know. It just shows you that Houston's definitely stacked on defense. Just need to work on that offense a little bit. Yeah. And then special teams player of the week was Chris Odom, a kick returner from Houston. And um, I'm – I don't have the stats on me, but you know I'm sure he put up a lot of great numbers. You know mm-hmm. to get that. Yeah. And again, another Houston player. Yeah, another Houston player. You know, it seems like you know they've got a lot of the players of the week. You know, it's just them wins didn't follow that. You know. Yeah. But here we go. We got at the end of the year. We got the All USFL Offense quarterback Kyle Slaughter from New Orleans. Uh, running back Darius Victor from New Jersey. Uh, the other running back uh, was it Reggie Corbin? I can't really read mm-hmm. it. Uh, wide receiver Victor Bolden Jr. from Birmingham, and uh, Turpin from the Generals, and then you know a tight end from New Orleans. You know, don't want to diss any of these guys, but that the Kyle. ones I Kyle. read the one the ones I read up uh, read off are the main players you know a lot of people don't really care about the name of the tackle and the guard and stuff but well hi 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 i do because <laughs> well, I, i've got that guard signature and uh that's right cameron hunt you were right. awesome man cheers Good to person. you my friend you were, coach you were you, man. coach loves you so does the colonel you're a very nice man we appreciate the autograph <laughs> you're going you're going places that's right. And then we got the all USFL defensive team. We'll just read off a few. Chris Odom from uh, Houston. Reggie Howard Jr. from New Orleans. Uh, Toby Johnson from the Generals. Uh, was it Demarcus Gates from Birmingham? Uh, and I think mm-hmm. Sco- Scooby Wright should have been in here if he wasn't injured, you know. Yeah. And well, I, I, know I think what? he would have been. I said the cornerback, Will Likely. Yeah, he will likely. Talk to me. Talked about yeah. him. He was one of them. And he's from uh, Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. The linebacker. I don't remember seeing uh, Jared <laughs> Fernandez, yeah. but, hey, that's a good name. I like it. Right. And oh. Donald Payne, you know, the defensive yeah. player this week, He's he made the team as he should. Yeah. You know, might have been one, of the, probably the best linebacker in, in the league uh, this year, I think, yeah. overall. <laughs> 
Here we got the all USFL special teams. We got coach's favorite kicker, Brandon Aubrey. <laughs> got Brandon Wright as a punter, uh, Victor Bolden Jr., uh, and then uh, two other guys. So, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, the way this is set up, I can't really read their names. If you can read their names on the bottom, Coach, I'll let you read them. But. I, uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus Alexander, and uh, yeah, we can't say that name. Yeah. Had one too many. I think it was Turpin. Yeah, it was Turpin. Yeah. Anyway, you know, great accolades for all these guys. First season. Uh, be something. But I don't, that, I don't see a world forever. class long snapper in here. No, I don't see any long snappers. Uh, go figure that. You know, so. <laughs> hey, you might have a chance, Brian. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but here's the end of the year awards. Uh, Coach of the year, Mike Riley from the New Jersey Generals. I think you know Skip Holtz probably should have been in the running for it. They went undefeated for most of the year. Yeah. But uh, New Jersey, you know, lost that first game to Birmingham. Then they didn't lose the rest of the year. So. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, he deserves it. He's a good coach. Uh, he'll be sticking around. He's been in a lot of programs. He, hey, yeah. He, I'm doing research on him. He is a good, a very good coach. He's been in a lot, a lot of programs. Right here, we got uh, uh, the defensive player of the year. Uh, you know, Chris Odom from Houston. Uh, Think he deserves it, you know. Mm -hmm. One of these Houston defensive players. Then we got offensive player of the year. Um, Darius, hey. Darius Victor. Oh, oh, yeah. Got a uh, Victor from New Jersey. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps sliding on me. That's it. Oh. Oh. Well, let's go back. Most valuable player uh, of the league was Turbin from the Generals. So the Generals racked up on this, uh, on these uh, end of the year awards, as they should. That all these guys are great players. So yeah. And then here, vo voted by his teammates for the best hair was Jamar Smith. <laughs> so Cheers to Jamar. We love you, buddy. I just, I thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, man, just awesome guy. You very know. nice, very polite. Yep. So, you know, actually, you know, thank the world of that guy because he, he was very nice to us, autograph, you know, oh, yeah. one hell of a football player. And uh, look forward to seeing him in the playoffs. Yeah. So I, th I think it's going to be exciting. You know, I don't think we're going to get any blowouts. I think it's going to be close games. It's going to stay close, I figure. I mean, there ain't going to be nothing to just – unless something happens, you never know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it just depends how rested is everybody. Everybody's got to travel to Ohio, you yep. know, play in a new stadium. Who knows how many fans are going to be there, you know. And nerves. Um, you've got to be nervous. I mean, it's the first playoffs. going to be for the first championship. You know, it's got to be, you know, pretty hectic. Yeah. But, but, Coach, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the X League. And we don't talk a lot about them because, you know, we don't know a lot about it. But uh, we'll do our best. Here was the game this past oh, week. Houston. Oh, Austin. My bad. <laughs> Austin, yeah. Had the Los Angeles Black Storm go down to the Austin Sound 19-50. to 50. Again, Did I can't find pick, any stuff. We picked, we picked, <laughs> we picked Austin the Beatles. Yeah, we picked Austin. But, like, you know, I can't find any stats or anything. I don't even know any names of anybody that plays on this. But, you know, we're here to report the news, and here's the score of last week's game. So, Brought to you by the makers of Victoria's Secret. That's right. <laughs> here's the game coming up for this week. Uh, you got the Denver Rush playing against the Seattle Thunder. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go Denver. I'm going to go Denver, Denver. just because of the – just because of the uh, color scheme, you know, I think that's why I picked them as my best uniforms out of the league. You know, I mean, who don't like a you know a grizzly bear as a mascot there? You know? Right. And you got the mountain. Wayne, 
Yeah, but Wayne did send me some pictures that he found of of the league, and you know, here's a picture of one of the players from Austin. Here's some from the Los Angeles Black Storm. Oh, I, I so like they're not really is, doing, is, doing lingerie. It's just a woman's football. Yeah, it's just it's just women's football. You know. I mean, they ain't got much padding. They don't, they, I must say, they don't have the traditional face mask. <laughs> That's for sure. They got like no. the RoboCop, you know. Yeah, the shield. <laughs> yeah, here's two players, one from the Kansas City Force and one from Chicago Blitz. You know, uniforms look cool, you know. Yeah, I like them. Like, them look good. Except if I can figure, if I can figure out where to watch it, I'll watch a game. This one right here says watch live, on-demand games, register for fan pass, and all that stuff. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. But um, I have to say, the yeah. number eleven on the end looks very intimidating. Oh yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to make I mean, her to come dark alley. No, no. And these girls, you know, these women—they're here to play football, so they've got to be tough, oh, yeah. you know, for sure. <laughs> but coach, let's uh, go ahead and transition again. We're gonna come over here to our picks. The uh, last week of the USFL season, uh, Coach, I'll let you have it if you want to read over week 10. All right. Let me just go ahead and slide these bad boys on again. Uh -oh. <laughs> Y'all realize why I do this so much? You probably just think I'm crazy. But I'm not. <laughs> but uh, in uh, week one, we had the Generals versus the Stars. Uh the colonel, this guy, right above me, and the coach, this guy, both took the generals. And Wayne and the mysterious false hog took the stars. But the generals take the big W in the end, W, baby. So that's a big win for me and the <laughs> colonel. Okay? Uh, moving yep. on to the next game, we got... Birmingham versus the Tampa Bay Bandits. The Colonel took a long shot on it. He about got it, but uh, he's the only one to take Tampa Bay. And I give it to him. It was a good shot. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, of course, Birmingham pulls off the big win. Uh, Wayne Co oh, Coach, that's me. Yes, this beautiful, beautiful pit viper wearing sunglass, good looking, handsome guy here. And Boss Hog all took Birmingham. Then we come out with a W. On to the third game. We got the Michigan. Or not Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Michigan Panthers, yes. Oh, sorry. Yep. Uh, and the Pittsburgh Maulers. And oh, oh, Colonel, he, he's, he's really wanting to shave the stash. Yeah. He took, he took Pittsburgh on this one. And I, I give it to him. It, it almost happened. Uh, yeah. And, but... Of course, the Panthers pull off the win. Shave the stash. Yep, shave the stash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the bat. Yep. But on to the last game, we had New Orleans and the Houston Gamblers. And I hate it. I wanted to do the Gamblers, but I was trying so hard to, you know, keep where I was and try to, try to go ahead of whoever I was running against, which I know who I was running against. Ball yeah. Hog, yeah. Yeah. But uh of course New Orleans New, New Orleans fell to the Houston Gamblers. Yeah, so we all lost that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you did pull ahead of Ball Hog. You're in the lead, oh. man, for the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite quotes, to be the man, you have to beat the man. And right now, I'm the man. That's right. <laughs> right now, you're the man. But, but uh, as of last week, the Colonel went one and three. Wayne went two and two. I went three and one, having the best of the week. And Boss Hawk went two and two. Uh, 
Overall, uh, the Colonel is 28 and 12. Not bad. Looking good. Wayne is 22 and 18. Yeah, he got back up there. He's, he's improved. Uh, <laughs> he, he's improved big time. But, uh, well, since the beginning. Uh, the, well, well, we'll just save mine for last, but we'll go on to Boss Hog. <laughs> Boss Hog is 30 and 10 for all our listeners out there. Good job, Boss Hog. Congrats to you. But on to the last jet flying, high profile, and pit viper wearing mug, the coach. That's me. 31 and 9. Wasn't it? I don't yeah, know what changed on me. I think it was 31 and 9. I'll drink to that. Yeah. 31 and 9. So. What we're going to do, guys, is uh, playoff time. It's going to be Coach and Boss Hog, and uh, we'll go to the next one right here. Me and Wayne are losers. We're not going to pick. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, co- co- Coach and Boss Hog is going to pick, and you know, if it needs to go to the championship game, uh, the winner is going to get the trophy, and we'll post a short little video. We'll reveal who Boss Hog is, regardless. <laughs> But uh, we'll sh- post a short little video of whoever wins with the trophy and uh, get that out there for everybody to see. Hey, y'all let us know who y'all think is going to win. Y'all let us know. Send us an email. Uh, Spring right. football. Y'all let us know. Uh, what, what, what would y'all like to see us do if one of, you know, if I win or if Boss Hog wins? We don't know who Boss Hog is. Right. I mean, I've been I've been trying to do some private eye investigating to try to find out who this is, but we don't know who it is. Right. But we will yep. if he wins. We'll have to send up the signal in the air and maybe Boss Hog a reply. You know. I'll have to go outside and do my pig squeal. That's right. That's what we, we got to fry some bacon or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's like cooking, baking, and playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, but here we go. You know, Coach is going to pick the Generals over the Stars and the Stallions over the Breakers, and Boss Hogs going Stars over Generals and Stallions over Breakers. So the way this works is if Boss Hog goes 2-0, and oh, Coach will go 1-1. One and one. That'll put him at a tie, which will be decided by the championship game. If they happen to pick the same team for the championship, we'll find out, like, maybe pick the score and whoever's closest will win. Uh, we'll do something. We'll talk more about that next week. Uh, because, truthfully, next week, Coach will win this thing, you know, so. Oh, yeah, brother. Coach is going to bring it home to all my coach maniacs. <laughs> but I, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a big W in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait for somebody to win it. It's gonna be awesome to. to it's gonna be awesome to reveal. We're all gonna be surprised. Um, yeah. And the video of the trophy presentation is gonna be good too. So. Yeah. But. Oh man, was a well. I, I know y'all noticed we ain't got Wayne with us. He he had some stuff come up, and I just like to tell everybody, uh, y'all y'all keep Wayne in his prayers and his family, and hope for a speedy recovery of sure. his situation and everything. And y'all just keep keep in mind. Uh, I'm not gonna put no names out there, but I call him my little butter bean. He's a fighter, and uh, he's not a butter bean. He more he's strain bean now. And just you know, good vibes out there for Wayne and his family. Uh, we will welcome you back whenever he's ready to return. But uh, I think that's going to do it for us, Coach. Do you got any news for us? <laughs> uh, the only news is be the man. You got to be the man. <laughs> this is the man right here. That's right. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening to the Spring Loaded Football Podcast. We appreciate everybody. The YouTube channel has exploded. Uh, you can listen to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Uh, help us out. Email us. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You know, what can we do to make it better? Because that's what we want to do is to try to make this show better. 
And uh, like we said, we're thinking about Wayne, and uh, we hope y'all do too. But, guys, we'll see y'all next week. Woo!